I'm back. Well, here we are, back again. Well, here I am, ready to set up the SY300 with its driver on the PC, and I'm running this on Windows 10, although it says the driver's version uh, for version 7 or 8 or 8.1 Windows. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, I have a USB cable connected to the SY300 and the power ready to turn on. On Windows 10, it uh, unzipped very slow but it is here on the desktop I downloaded the driver which is version 1 and uh, I'm about to install it uh, so let's get a bit closer and take a quick look at uh, how you do that it's all simple like me well here we go here's the SY300 and uh, here we are ready to uh, rock and roll all I need to do as I said I've already plugged in the PC I've got a USB cable sitting at the back ready to plug in. I'm going to plug it in now and then turn on the SY. This is what will happen, assuming it plugs in. <laughs> and by the way, it's one of those printer cables, you know, the one you've never got that isn't included with the box. That should all be good fun. So, let's turn her on. Maybe you can see it coming up there. This is decided it's going to do something. It should be fun. Let's just sit and wait see what happens if anything wait it says here the driver will be installed automatically well I'm waiting yeah something's going on yeah that's one of the problems with this sort of stuff you get Windows 10 out a few days ago and uh, the driver on a brand new product doesn't seem to work too well. All goes pretty slow. Look at it. It's going like a dog. Oh, now finishing. Yeah, maybe it's me. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, installation has been completed. Close the ROM and you're back to exactly as you think you were before, I guess. And here I am uh, looking at the boss website. Uh, as you can see, it's on the SY300 page. And we've got. Uh, a little section down here that says support and all the rest of it. But scroll down a bit and you'll see it will say downloads right there. So let's click that. So there are the drivers and we've got this uh, Boss Tone Studio for either Windows or Mac. Well I'm going to click it for Windows and let's hope it works. <laughs> Installing Boss Tone Studio. It's all exciting isn't it? Well, it will be later. At least that's the theory. There it is. Where to install it? Well, we'll just default that for now. Okay, here we go. Installing application. Well, that's the theory. Remember, it is Windows 10. It may work or may not, but if it does, you've probably seen one of the first installations. Oh, looks like it did something. Okay, well, here we are on the desktop, and uh, you can see I've installed the Boss Tone Studio there. Let's give it a double click and in theory it should work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But don't worry about that. I've also got the uh, SY300 turned on in the background. You can't see it, but I can. When it wakes up in a second, doing a bit of communicating there, as you can see. There it goes. So, first thing you want to do is just click on this screen up here so we can get to see everything that's possible to see okay as you can see uh, down here we've got a whole load of patches and the editor has been chosen because by default it seems that's what it does okay so I've clicked on the SY 300 sequence on U01 and let's have a, a wander across to FX10D and if you click that you'll uh, you'll see that this is the effect section uh, for this particular patch. In this case, it's the ODDS, uh, and it's a Blues OD. You've got a load of things you can choose from. You can just whiz down here and choose whatever we fancy. I'm not going to change it for now. And we've got another uh, overdrive type. So you've got all these sort of effects pedals, for want of a better word. Tube Screamer, Turbo OD, OD Distortion Rat. Governor, you know them, I know them. Now another 
nice thing you can do is if you have, to have a look along these, these are in the sort of chain that goes to the output. We have sort of the oscillators here, the input, the oscillators, uh, FXs and all sorts of things. But these FXs here, we've got FX1, FX3, FX2 and so on. I'm able to just pick this up and move it around to a different location. If I want to move the effects around, you can see it's now hopped to the middle. You just put it back by, just grab it and place it down. It's harder to place in a hole as tight as that, but there you go. Okay, now, if we want to save this patch, let's imagine we've just done a bit of work on it. We can whiz across the right up here. And uh, we can choose any particular user position for the patch. I'm going to choose U02. Leave it exactly as it is, but if I wanted to change the name, I can change the name just by clicking on it. And then we can say OK, and off it's gone. OK, well, notice also we've got a control and expression button over here. Let's go and click that, and uh, you'll see that these, all these controllers appear. All very nice and simple. You can choose any one of these controls across here. Let's choose control 2. And you'll see all the various things that you can assign to that down here. Okay, and to get out of that, just you see there's a back arrow here. Let's just click that and take you back out. There you go. Okay, what I want to do now is show you simply how to make a backup of all the patches to the Tone Studio. Click on Librarian, and you've got up here at the top a backup button. Just hit the backup. Back up the SY300 user patch data to the library and just say OK. And there it is. You'll notice it says backup complete. We can just click OK. And you can see that this tone set has appeared down the uh, left hand column, of which if we were to do more things, you'll see more of them appear as we go. OK, what I want to do now quickly is just to let's click on this one here. Oops. There it is. Chosen. And now we can go, uh, basically, click on the Live Set button. Apply Live Set. Uh. Apply the selected patch to the SY300. It's going to take everything in that bank and move it across to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Let's, so let's just do that. You'll see this little thing appears on screen for a few moments because, yeah, the fact is that, you know, USB is a bit slow. OK, well, there it is. It's applied the live set, but it took about three minutes to do that little bit of a restore. Just bear that in mind. What I want to do now, quickly, is to just show you how I can take this patch. Let's, let's take number two and just drag it over here to, say, U05 and let it go. And what that does, you can see doing something there, you can see U05, it's been moved. Uh, and replace the original. That's a simple way of being able to add a patch. Now one of the things you can do that's uh, quite interesting about this is you, if you look up here, you've got an export button. So we click on that, in theory, and we're able to save the entire patch bank uh, to a PC. Now if you save it to a USB stick, of course, then you can stuff it on another one and uh, restore it at a different times, or just save it for a backup or anything like that. Now, I'm not going to save it. You can just type your code in there and away you go, but I'm just going to cancel that for now. Now, of course, you can do the same thing as well as exporting it. You can import. Now, I can just click that and we could go and load in, uh, you know, a live set. I don't have one because I just didn't bother saving, but let's assume we just did that. It'll just pull it back in here or you can pull it into other places. Now another thing, if I want to create a brand new live set, I can just click on this button up here, create live set, and you'll see it'll say completed. Now what I can do, I can go and grab these uh, patches, any ones I like, and I can just pick them up and place them in here. You can see I've put a couple in there. I can sort of scroll down and, yeah, I want that one next. Whoops. Yeah, a couple of presses sometimes, otherwise it doesn't work. And also notice I can grab this patch here and I can move it up the chain to wherever the red line goes. I can have it at the top. I can move this one in the middle down. So you can rearrange whatever you like to wherever you like, uh, you know, any patch. Now once we've made this live set, we can 
whiz up to here where it says edit and just click it and we can sort of click on there and say uh, Tony's that'll do you just say okay we renamed it to Tony's live set it's as simple as that but if I wanted to get rid of this live set we can hit edit and you'll see a little X at the side just click that and say delete and it's gone now one of the things that's uh, very useful about this uh, piece of software is down in the bottom corner here we've got a thing called Tone Central now, I don't know how many people have used Tone Central but it's almost like a place where you can go and get these uh, patches I click back these patches or indeed these patches uh, for free uh, that have been designed by other people so we whiz down to the bottom and go to Tone Central you see it will pop up and on the left hand side here we've got a number of choices uh, to do with the type of uh, music styles that we want to pull down you've got metal in here rock in here even rockabilly pop latin hip-hop yo <laughs> all the stuff man funk yeah funky man we got country ambient acoustic blues they're all here so when you get fed up of going through them go back up here and click on all and you'll see that everything will appear at the moment we've got four live sets these here that have been generated by well what they say are famous people uh, let's have a look at uh, Gr Gundy Keller I think his name is yeah there he is now if we look at Gundy great name by the way yeah I'd add something like Tony but that's another story but if you look at his uh, creative power set uh, this is really gives you a bit of an indication in this section what it's all about but you know they're just words aren't they so if we sort of scroll down a little bit we've got a video and we can uh, click on the video to see what comes out what well, we would do okay well we had no sound but uh, so what I did is I went out of this because it was Windows 10 and uh, had a look at the sound card and uh, this software had made the sound go out through the USB port now you want to be careful with that and uh, when I, fi I switched it back to uh, speakers and when I fired this software back up just look what popped up connection SY300 audio in audio out MIDI in MIDI out and all the rest of it so I've just switched this back to speakers for now for this demo but just be aware of that uh, that the program can grab your ports and grab your sound and uh, you'll have none <laughs> nice. okay now I'm back here where I left off with Grundy or Gundy Keller and uh, we're just having a look and down, up and down the uh, creative power set there it is you've got a video and underneath that you've got some uh, some audio tracks so we'll look at the video first give you a bit of a quick example it's not that loud but I'm not here to show you loud am I here we go This is a demo of uh, some of the effects that he gets. Well, I suppose he sounds better than I do. Okay, and you'll see another one and so on and so forth. Okay, enough of that for now. Now I'm just going to scroll down a little bit uh, to this little section here, just below his video. And we can, we've can we got Sweet Comb Filter that you just heard. There it is. But if we want to have a look at the Solar Blues, which was the second one, that sounded cool. Yeah. And if we scroll down a little bit, you've got a description here, down underneath, about what the patch is about and things like that. Which is all very nice. He sounded great. There he is. Well, 
Well, there again, he's played by Rowan. He would sound great, wouldn't he? Now, the point is, if we wanted to take all this uh, live set and add it to our live sets, it's all very simple. You just click the Add button there. Now, I'm going to do that in a second, but I just want to show you some of the others that we've got here before we move on. Okay, what I'm going to do is take a look at another uh, collection. This is Alex Hutchings, who's a really, really great guitarist. I think he's better than the other guy, but it's a matter of personal opinion. And we can go and have a quick listen at him. He'll be doing the same things. Very nice ambience. Or ambience, as they say in some places, if you're not English. Okay, well that's good if you like that style. I, I, it's not my style, but he, he is good at what he does. If we scroll down a little bit, like we did before, we, we've been listening to that one. Let's just choose one, just randomly, and we can have a listen. Well, you get the idea of that. Then we've got a third one here, because we've only got four available right now. This says the Essential Tone Collection by, who's this? Yutaka Nakano. I know that. Who is he? <laughs> I've never heard of him. He's probably pretty good. Let's have a quick gander. There he goes. point of all these sounds isn't that we should sit here all night listening to them because that could be fun but it's not really what I want to do the point of them is this that if you listen to these and you know analyze them a little bit and see how they fit into your music you can pull these down off into your uh, live set collection on your SY300 and use them randomly you know I already showed you how we can pick them up and place them in a live set it's all easy so let's go and do that Hold on. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, take this one here, this uh, collection by our friend, Alex Hutchings, and we're going to scroll down, look at what you want. I'm just going to say add. And that'll take it, and you'll see it says completed. So let's go and get the next one. We'll just pull the lot down, just say add. Completed. Essential tone by Utaka or Utaka. I like that. Completed. Everything's being confirmed as you can see. Now we've got this pop synth stuff. Who knows? We'll just add it. It's free. Okay, well, the, here we are back in the librarian, and here are the four uh, live sets that I pulled down. And you can see this one's Tamas Barbarous pop synth. This one's Essential Tone Collection by whoever it is. Anyway, we've got the four. And if I wanted to create a new live set, like we showed you before, I can just click Create New Live Set. And now I can grab, you know, whatever ones I want out of this, I can just go and place them in here. Uh, in fact, any out of the, any of these four, I can just go grab them and pull these seats. Sometimes you've got to do it a couple of times. Let's imagine that's all we need, but we've chosen them out of four completely separate live sets. And now we can do that arranging that we were talking about earlier on. There it is. So there are your live sets. And we can say apply live set. So if we go back down here to U001, I say apply live set. You notice this one's sort of lit up in blue. So let's just do that. Let's apply it. And you'll see that the first setting, you can see them changing as we go. You see them? Well, that was it, because I only had four sounds. But then now the first four sounds are those sounds. So now, we've got another few things in here before we go whizzing back to other places. Uh, remember, we're in the librarian. We've got a tuner down at the bottom, so we can do a quick tune up or down. or this sort of stuff. You, you know, you know the score with tuners. Let's get that out of the way. Now, just before I do go out to this uh, particular section of play, which is down at the bottom, it opens up this console, and you can import a file here. 
Now, it needs to be a WAV file to import. That's the first thing you need to know. And the other things about it, it needs to be 44.1 uh, kilohertz, 16-bit uh, depth, uh, linear it says here, number of channels stereo, and format WAV. Now, when you import that, uh, one of the things that's useful is you've got a thing here called looping. I can't loop because, well, it doesn't let me do it because I haven't got a file to pull in, not on this particular laptop. But you've got a choice of two or three things here. Uh, this one here says not looped. This one here in the middle says the selected song is looped. The selected song plays repeatedly. That's what it says. And the third one uh, really says continue playing this song in the list. So if you've got a list of them, it'll play them one after the other. Which could be useful if you do uh, a lot of music with backing and things like that. But I'm not sure about the memory and things like that. So... Just be wary that uh, the memory does have limitations. We've got input sensitivity, of which, when I was looking at it on the system before, uh, in fact, there were only sort of three settings. Now, on this one, there's a load more, so I suspect that this is the place you're going to be doing a lot of stuff. You patch your system. It's on system at the moment. Uh, we've got set one, set two, and set three. There you have it. Loads to work on. Okay, lastly but not least is up at the top there, you'll see there's a little news button. See that where the mouse is? That news button, when you first come into this application, will uh, tell you that there's uh, a manual you can download that's been updated and things like that. Let's switch back to the editor. Now, I'm not going to spend too long in here because you could literally spend a week faffing around in this. It's really loads and loads of stuff. And the manual isn't that helpful. Well, at least from what I see of it, it isn't. Let's click Solar Blues, and uh, what we get, Solar Blues was one of them patches from one of them guys. You can see the things that are there that basically they have set up. Not so much for that. You've got to wind this backwards and forwards with your mouse. So, wave pitch, we can look at this filter section. We can go through and edit all of these things. LFOs, sequencing, okay we can layer, we've got the control expansion that I showed you before, or the expression should I say, and so on and so forth. So that was only on oscillator 1, and we click oscillator 2, you can see things start to change in oscillator 3, well it's off on that one. We've got, on this particular patch, we've got FX2 up here, which says Looks like rat. Oh, rotary. <laughs> Fancy that. But you've got all them you can choose. As I said before, there are loads to choose. Okay. I mean, we've got another FX there, which has been thrown in parallel, which is a reverb. Then we've got this FX1, which has been moved to the end, which happens to have any, another overdrive. That's the boys one. Okay, well, that concludes the uh, sort of simple introduction. Uh, to the uh, Boss Tone Central software and controlling software. Do remember that uh, it can take over that uh, sound port, uh, which can be a bit of a problem when you try and do a demo at least. <laughs> uh, let's go back up top and uh, have a look at uh, the unit itself. Now, hey, listen up. One of the most exciting things about the SY300 is the fact that you don't have to use a GK3 or a GK2 or any of the other GK series pickups on your guitar. This is a, an, an awesome manoeuvre, I would say, uh, because you can just plug in and, in theory, go. Now, I just want to talk about something regarding the SY300 and its capabilities. Now, I'm not saying that the SY300 won't be any good when we plug it in. It probably will. Uh, from some of the videos I've seen and the, the sort of demo stuff when I was over in the Music Mesa in Frankfurt this year. Uh, it was reasonably impressive. There's no doubt about that. But I wonder a little bit about this uh, uh, polyphonic mode where you're playing all these chords and things where, you know, historically, uh, some equipment could play perfectly well with a guitar with no interface as long as it was single notes. Indeed, 
the Sonus GM2 universal guitar to MIDI converter is exactly that. <laughs> what you did is you plug your guitar in and you could have it chromatic or not. And uh, you've got a MIDI out this side. Oh, hey Tony, what are you doing demonstrating this while we're talking about the SY300? Well, this was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. When I saw the demo of this thing uh, some while ago at a show, get over there. <laughs> and needless to say, some I played chords, it didn't work. It worked great for single notes. And um, rumor had it that oh, the technology from Sonus was bought or licensed, one or the other, uh, by Boss and Roland. And they incorporated that technology into this uh, pedal. Now that may or may not be the case. Nobody's telling, are they? Nobody says anything. The manual for this thing, by the way, is thin. It might look thick, but it's, it's really thin. We'll be going over that a bit later. So that technology uh, has always bothered me about this product since the day I saw it. And we're going to find out today whether actually the SY300 is as good as people say, or whether the SY300 falls down a little bit uh, when we're talking about uh, you know polyphonic stuff and chords and stuff like that, along with the, the playing for the lead. Uh, I've showed you a little bit about this uh, tone central interface, and it, as I said, it is exactly very, very so similar to the to the GP10 that uh, I can spend hours on it, and I could very easily do that. There's no point. What I do want to do though is run through uh, all of the menu system and the rest of it with the SY300. But that's after we've had a look inside and I, I really do want to look inside this unit because I, maybe we'll get some inkling about the way that it's done and stuff like that. Uh, and then we'll move on to the menu system. We'll do a bit of an overview of all of it and uh, then of course we'll play, see what we think should all be good. Now you should be able to get some sort of idea of the size of this thing uh, in relation to me. I'm not that big but uh, you can see it. I'd say that's about uh, 10 inches across and about 8 inches deep. So it's going to take up a bit of the uh, real estate on your board isn't it? But don't worry about that. Nobody else seems to care. <laughs> okay what I'm going to do is uh, flip her over and uh, show you a little bit inside. So I'm just going to turn it off See you soon, it said. Well, it will, when I turn it back on, unless it goes pop. But it's highly likely it won't. And one thing I did want to talk about is where I bought it from. Mm, that's another story too. But I just want to highlight this so that you are aware of who's who. Yeah, I bought it from them guys there. Absolute music. They're in the UK. And they have it marked up here at £499. That's about uh, $800 at least. And I rang them up. My regular local dealer failed to come up with this product. Rowan didn't send him one, even though it had been ordered for four to five months. And I had to resort to going to look around the internet. So I called these guys up, said they had one in stock. And uh, sure enough, they did have one in stock. What they didn't bother telling me though, uh, just looking at it when I received it, is that in reality, this is a floor model. It might have been just pulled out or anything like that, but it's a floor model. And uh, it was on show. That's what all this is all about. They don't put that in the box and not open it, do they? No, of course they don't. So the story goes that I said, well, it's for a review. I'll mention you, you know, that you guys are the good guys. But you know what? They wouldn't knock a bean off. Nothing, not one single penny, not one. Or oh, is it that? Ah, you figure it out. Anyway, absolute music, definitely. Rock and roll, not the place to go to buy it. Right? Remember, I said it. They won't discount a bean, so don't waste your time calling them up. Go somewhere else. Well, here we are inside the unit, and, uh, you know, the truth is, there's very little to talk about, uh, really, when you come inside one of these Roland units. And um, there's a very good reason for that. It's got every chips, custom chips. Uh, that's probably memory. That's probably processor. But it could be anything. They don't tell you 
what they are. There's no easy way to find out unless you've got all the manuals and the service stuff, which I really don't have. What's very important, though, uh, in my view, in coming in and looking inside these things, is to see the quality of the product. And Roman product, or Boss product, uh, it's always first class. If we zoom in a little bit, you'll see an idea of what I'm talking about. It's all really, really nice, high quality. Let's see if I can. Yeah, pretty much everywhere on the board, everything's good. You can see it. So, as far as the quality goes, we're not really going to be able to say anything except the quality is pretty much awesome. Which is what you get generally from most of the uh, Rowan or Rowan Boss, it says Boss in this case, uh, products. It's basically a computer. You have your I.O. here, you have all your controls on separate boards, so if you get any problems with them, that's good. The theory is you'll be able to buy some separate boards, but in reality you probably doubt it. And everything's mounted onto this nice thick steel chassis at the back, which I think is uh, a really good thing. So I'm not going to spend too long inside here, there's, there's not really that much to talk about, except for that quality. And as I said, you can see it yourself, it's first rate quality. And what did you expect? They're not cheap gear, but they are really, really well made. Well, here we are, back around the top, as you can see. Which is more than I can. <laughs> uh, let's take a quick look across here. I'll show you quickly around the back afterwards. We've got, first of all, DCN, power on and off. We've got the uh, USB right here. Do you see that? It's one of them square ones at this end that uh, you use for a printer and at the other end it's a regular USB that you'd plug in a PC. We've got an ex expression pedal or control 4 and 5 out of this. Uh, it's covered in the manual how to wire that up, it's all pretty simple. MIDI in and out or through. So you've got an in or an out or through combined, it's in one. You've got this sub output of left and right it's either mono on right here, or you've got left and right, and this sub out can go to a mixing desk, just for your information. We've also got, uh, or a PA, we've also got the main output, which is uh, left phones, right mono, and we've got even got a return here, so we probably got to send out there and back in through there. How nice, actually, we'll talk about that a bit later. Further along, we've got, on the far side, we've got the guitar input and a through. I guess the through could go out to something and come back into this return here. Well, I haven't really looked at the manual yet. On the front, we've got an output level, which is all pretty simple. Self-explanatory, really. Higher or lower. We've got a synth stroke FX button, which will switch us across from one thing into another. We have a blender, blending the oscillators and stuff like that. Again, we'll come back to all of this. The right button. And, and when we're in these uh, other screens, these, these buttons down the bottom here become something else. Well, that one doesn't. Okay, it does. You can see, if you look careful, you can see it change. Exit that. We can uh, move along with this knob here, and we can just choose a preset, and you'll see that depending on uh, what the preset's got in it, these various things will light or not. We have a menu button uh, for selecting either system or control and expression, that sort of stuff, after exit. And we've got a page uh, scroll here, where we can whip across various uh, settings for the particular patch that we've chosen. And 
that's all you've got in there. And if you notice, the settings equate to the knobs. All very simple, really. Yeah, you've got a tuner too. I didn't tell you about that. There it is. And um, it's adjustable on its pitch, and it's got a mute for the output and stuff like that. Down the bottom, we've got on and off. Very simple. We've got a control that will do something depending on the patch. We have a control 2, which at the moment goes up and down. Okay, but that can change depending on, again, which patch and all the other stuff. If we press both of these, as you can see, it says here, tuner. So you don't have to come down here and start faffing around for tuner. That's it on top really. Uh, let's have a quick look around the back and you'll just see the type of connections that are there. And then we'll come back to the top and have a good uh, ganders at what's going on there. Sounds good. Okay, well here we are around the back. Everybody's having a good look at my cereal, who cares? I don't. Uh, you've got a, a locket thing here that you can lock the device down with. All the things that I discussed earlier, you can see the type of connectors they are. Uh, they're all look to me like mono connectors then do. Uh, with the exception of this one, which uh, I believe is like stereo, and uh, you can have it as either control four and five or as an expression pedal. So you'll be using a stereo plug in that one. I think all the rest are mono. How boring is that? <laughs> There's your on off. And by the way, when you come to turn this thing off, you have to just hold it in. It isn't one of these that's. Uh, doing things the other way. You see the connector there for the USB. It's one of them awful giant things. I don't know why they do that, but that's just life. While we're around here, we can see another few things uh, to discuss, just for a short time. Uh, Boss Corporation based in Japan, but this was actually made in Taiwan. Now, Taiwan is not China. Uh, Taiwan these days is a very high quality uh, place to have your equipment made. Most of the people that I used to know in Taiwan, and I used to know an awful lot of them, uh, they all moved to China and opened factories there for obtaining lower costs on manufacture. So when you look inside this board, uh, as we have, really that quality is the same as you'd get out of Japan. It's really very, very high quality. So yes, you're paying more for it, but uh, that's life. What I also like to see is that uh, it's got proper markings for uh, Roche compliance for Europe. It's got CE approvals, FCC approvals. I'm not sure at the end one. That's probably a Canadian thing, something like that. Or maybe Australian. But it's got all the credentials, and you can bet your life that it really does have them. Unlike some of this gear we look at that's not even marked up. Uh, I reviewed an Empress Super Delay just the other day. And you know there isn't even a C marking on the entire device. It makes you wonder whether it is actually CE approved. My guess is it isn't. Ha! Now, just before we do go any further, I've ripped that awful retail price, absolute music sticker off, and it wants rolling up like this. So you do a great job of this. Rolling up like this. And fitting somewhere. Now, if you've got an idea of where to fit it, just let me know. <laughs> Yeah, I could do with doing that, but in the meantime, the best thing to do is roll it up, light the end, smoke it, and throw it away, because that's all it's fit for. Yeah. Now, I usually uh, show a little bit of the manual. Looks nice and thick, doesn't it? We've got a lot to go at here. Well, I hate to say it, but it's not nice and thick. In fact, in fact, it's that thin really that thin. It comprises of about uh, exactly, I say exactly, I can't even get it. It comprises of 11 pages of which the first one's rubbish until you get to side two and the last one's rubbish. <laughs> so it comprises about 10 pages of pretty much nebulous stuff. cutting back and cutting back on this sort of stuff and then you've got to go onto the software where the manual's sort of online and you've got to find it and download it and read all that stuff or print it all out. Oh shoot, it's costing you now. 
So the products got more expensive and the manuals have got, well, cheaper. Nice. Yeah. We'll come back to this. Well, there's little to come back to, to tell you the truth. It's just not very good. <laughs> now I do want to take a quick look at uh, some of the parameters and controls that are sitting around on the front of the unit uh, and how easy it is to, to use this unit uh, with the sounds that are there. Okay, let's take a quick look at uh, editing some of these uh, bits of information. You can hit the synth FX like so and you'll notice that uh, in there we've got basically three oscillators one two and three you can see them on the screen uh, now you can use the select knob to select one of these oscillators and oh, let's choose that number one and the way you choose it you basically just push the knob when you've done that we've got like a a selection of the things that we can edit okay and once again you can whiz down choose one and you press it and that will bring up that particular thing for oscillator one it's on filter amp and here are the parameters so we can just very simply do all this stuff with the knobs that have been provided we can do the mixes and the rest all pretty much uh, simple really that is now then, exit back out of that to there, and exit back out, we're back to where we started. And one of the things interesting about this uh, particular unit, well it's interesting to me, I've never heard any of this stuff before, but uh, uh, basically there's like a layer function, and what we'll do is we'll stay on this, this dream clean, whatever it is, doesn't really matter, hit that, and uh, I was looking for the layer if you choose this there is no layer which is a bit weird if we choose the next oscillator there is a layer section you can see that there just choose it as so and so you can see that oscillator 2 has got this layer and we are able to adjust all the parameters we've got a lower fade, lower, upper and upper fade so we can twizzle around with this stuff, you can see what we're adjusting there as you go nothing too dynamic except you're changing the actual pitch hear that? upper fade and so on now there's also a built in sequencer in the SY300 as you can see there we can uh, sort of whiz up to that and take a look around well looks like that one's off it looks like that one's on fancy that <laughs> so you can change all your parameters down here I'm not going to bore you with all the parameters forever but you can see if you look up here a bit like most uh, the row and boss stuff you've got a number of pages so you can sort of hop along to each one of these as necessary as you need to indeed now one of the things you got up here is a thing called a blender now listen this is nothing to do with cooking eggs <laughs> or mixing cakes right indeed nothing at all what this thing does it allows you to well let's click it and it will take the parameters uh, from all the patches and let you apply them here so, as you play, you're going to get these different sounds. That's the basic shortcut of it. And uh, the blender really is a shortcut to get different sounds. You know, it says in the manual here, it says, uh, oh, yeah, well, sometimes you can, you know, uh, by mistake or by luck, pick a, a great sound. And uh, the blender's idea is to allow you to do that all nice and easily, rather than faffing around you know for months on end in that software and the rest of it just twiddle around with these knobs and rock and roll that's all I can say oh one last thing on the blender uh, you can have it in auto mode so it automatically shuffles all these parameters around all by itself and of course when you find one that you like you can write it with the right button I like that nice and simple 
easy to use. So let's take another look at this synth FX button and uh, just have a quick whiz into there. You've got basically loads and loads of stuff to look at. Now if you move this knob around you can sort of you'll see it sort of follows the oscillators and then hops along to these other things. Now these other things are basically effects. Let's have a look at that one. What's it say? Slow gear. Well, yeah, it's one of them old effects. It's this one. Flanger. Well, we've got a flanger, and there are the uh, controls for the flanger. Nice and simple. Like most of the Rolling Boss stuff, it's, uh, it's not really that complex at this level. It gets more complex when you're into those LFOs and VFOs and all that stuff in the uh, software. If you want it to be. Most people I know uh, don't want it to be. What they want is to be able to download some of them. I'll call them banks, although they're not banks. Uh, those uh, uh, sets of 10 uh, presets. And uh, get on with it. Bit of adjusting. Maybe cook up your own couple of sounds. Maybe even with that auto and the, the blender. And away you go. You know, nice and simple. That usually, being nice and simple, actually solves a load of stuff. Now on these effects that are in here, I can tell you there is a load of effects in this unit. And a lot of them are sort of guitar related effects, such as chorus, chorus and delay, chorus and reverb, compressors, regular delay by itself, delay and reverb, EQ, flanger, isolator, that's an effect that cuts the sound of the specified region, so it's sort of a bit like a filter really. Uh, there's a limiter. There's a, a lo-fi, which will make your sound sound crap. <laughs> there's an overdrive uh, or distortion, uh, and there's a pan. You've got a phaser, a rotary, you know, a bit like a Univide, but not quite. A slicer, I never could get on with them. Slow gear, touch wire, tremolo, and a Univide, a real one. Well, so it says. We'll you'll see about that, won't we? <laughs> so... You've got a massive amount of effects in here, just even if you were to use it as a regular pedal. Uh, you could even turn these oscillators off and just have it as an effects unit, I guess. I haven't tried any of it yet, because it's brand new to me, as it's brand new to you. But looking at it this way, uh, you know, as we are, in simple mode, I think that is probably the best way to give you an introduction to this device. The other thing I like about it is, well, it's all solid metal, and, uh, you know, Decent knobs, and these are not knobs that click, they sort of just, they do have a sort of click, but very, very faint it is. Here it, it's those light touch switches I like. Quick look at the right button, we can write, we can exchange it with somewhere else, we can initialize this patch, or we can insert it uh, between two others. There you go, those are the options, I'm not going to do them because it all gets a bit boring really, isn't it? Now as well as all those sound parameters you've got, if we click the menu, you've got a system menu and we can just click it like that. We've got a number of things, some sound more familiar than others, for example, input sensitivity. Let's take a look. Oh well, <laughs> that wasn't too hard to figure out. Set 1, set 2 or set 3. I guess it's just dependent on, I'm not going to read the book on that, that will be just dependent on what type of pickups you've got I guess. Move along to output, and we can have uh, main out off modulated, sub out off modulated, noise filters, output select, well, line or amp. Nice. We can move across to these others main and sub out output level mode, uh, subsystem control. I don't even know what that is, but I don't really care. So you've got a number of choices back in that area again. None of it's rocket science when you're sitting in front of it with your amp and the rest of it. Uh, we've also got uh, an expression. That's these uh, expression pedals that you can fit to this down the back here, down this connection up here, and change the way that it works. Simple. Global EQ. Well, could be useful. Main or sub. As I said, with the sub, you can be sending that to a PA. Uh, or to a desk or all sorts of things and same with the main you can send that to stereo amps or one amp in mono whatever you fancy and you can tart it up a bit there with a number of 
different EQ settings. It's all pretty simple. Yeah. Let's get out of that bit. We've got a MIDI section. MIDI settings. You know, faff around with program maps and the rest. I'm not really going to spend any time in this. Program mapping. Okay. Program controller one. Program two. Yeah. Except there for hours. And a dump. Uh, system in patches. We can dump it to something else over MIDI. Which is nice to be able to store things. Last we've got the USB. Uh, standard it says here. Routing. Standard mixed. Resent it. That means save it. That means uh, record it clean. And pull it back through the loop. Because we have got a loop if you remember. Uh, to actually get the uh, the final sound. Which allows you then to uh, faff around a bit with sounds on this. And then we've got direct off. Just leave it where it is. We've got all these other things. And we've got another screen there for mix off or mod. Well, who knows. Any more screens? Yeah, we've got another screen. We've got a quick knob. Yeah, just what the doctor ordered. Now I'm just running through all this stuff willy-nilly because the fact is that some of these things aren't even in the manual. <laughs> they cut it back that far. Let's not worry. Quick knob. What's it do? Uh, knob 1, target category. Da, da, da. It's setting these up. So you can set them up for different things. I hate spend all day on that. Patch extent. I don't even know what that means. Let's have a look. Patch extent. Offer on minimum and maximum. Oh yeah. User one and piece. So you you could shut your patches down uh, to say ten of them within these two settings that you've made here. Simple. We've got a unlock. The select knobs either locked or it isn't, and the tune is either locked or it isn't. LCD. That's probably changing the contrast. Yeah, it is. I'm not we had a auto off on the 55 series synth, and you you could record a loop in that. Uh, product and the problem with recording the loop uh, is you couldn't save it to anything and uh, yeah after 10 hours it turned off <laughs> and you lost everything so that's not really that great we've also got the uh, the thing for a factory reset which we can look at we can execute it system of patches da 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 da, da. I'm not going to do that and that's the end of them we can exit back to there we got this control and expansion thing control 1 control 2 control 3 what they do and what they don't do. There you go. And that shows you all the basic parameters other than pressing a few up and down. You can see what them are being up and down on there. So you do all the regular stuff, all the obvious things that this unit you would expect to do. I like the finish by the way as well. All very nice. Let's go back up top, eh? I'm back up top. <laughs> well, guess what? I've still got the GP10 and you know this unit here and this unit here in some ways are so familiar they, they sort of tone central the latest gig ready patches from boss tone central yeah V guitar sounds in there which that doesn't say it's got you can see any of that stuff but this one has the pickup and that one doesn't and uh, I think that's one of the major differences you might have different sounds in there, of course. And uh, how your program might be slightly different, although I don't think it is. The fact is that uh, it's all good up to now. <laughs> but we shall see when we get outside. I mean, I'm, I'm no expert at playing this sort of stuff. Uh, but I can plug it in just like you can. And I'm just like you. So that's all going to be quite exciting. Now, just before we do get any further forward, I mean, I do want to gripe about the odd thing. And uh, one of the things I want to gripe about, yeah, the USB cable that isn't included in the £499. You're getting no discount from Absolute Music. Yeah. Yeah, that, that purchase, you know the one. Yeah. A $2 cable, right? This is what we're talking about. And these characters can't be bothered to put one in there. But I suspect that there was no cable 
with this unit as there was no cable with other units that I've had from Roland that needed a cable and it wasn't there. Now if you bear in mind that you've got this tone central thing and you've got the drivers and everything else that USB cable I would say is essential. It's not oh it's an option. No it's essential. It's as essential as the on off button. <laughs> so that's one little criticism that I'm not too happy with uh, about this product especially for that sort of money you know the dealers claim oh there's no margin in it but listen I happen to know that on this product as all Roland Boss product there's more margin in it than you think and uh, especially for the bigger dealers you know if you buy them one they may not give you quite the same but these people uh, that you will deal with and I deal with make more money on this stuff than you you think and uh, don't let them tell you they don't. You can tell them Tony sent you. <laughs> now there's one thing I just want to point out here as you're going to see a bit later. Uh, it does sound like John Ward or it can do. Uh, I couldn't play like John Ward but the only problem is it didn't sound like John Ward in the <laughs> I can't see the John Ward setting. <laughs> this is awesome. So here I am back in the uh, the time to give the conclusion you know the final the final countdown if you will and I like this unit I think it's uh, overpriced though uh, but I do like the unit what I don't like about the unit is as opposed to the uh, GP10 that has the the pedal on it uh, it's similar money give or take uh, admittedly you don't need the GK3 but there's no pedal, you've got to go and do that and faff around with that. And you know what, some of these pedals can cost some of them are 80 quid or 120 dollars to you guys. I don't like that aspect of it too much. And uh, another thing I don't like is the uh, the live sets, uh, which I've spoken about for you know many times before uh, with the GP10 uh, and the uh, the 55 indeed. I forget which model that is, but you know which one I mean, the one I reviewed. They're pretty similar when it comes back to this tone central thing, and uh, they they seem to have this live set type of mentality. Listen, I'm all for give me a couple of banks up and down and things like that. You know, the simple stuff in life. That's why I married the missus. And another thing I didn't like was in how it uh, when I connected this to my little PC here, how it stole the interface. Uh, from the speakers and decided to send it back out this USB back to that device that had got no sound on it at the time. Now you might have had sound on yours but listen when you try and do all this stuff you don't really want the software stealing the interface do you? So that gives it a little bit of a negative as well so overall though uh, most of these get a sort of seven ish maybe an eight. Uh, I tell you what I'll give it a nine uh, that will differentiate it between the others that I've looked at and this one and the reason it gets the nine isn't that it sounds a million times better than some of the others because I don't think it does. Uh, what's better about this is that in the case of the others they fail on the interface uh, to follow you. Uh, on this one this will follow you to the end of the earth you can play chords and single notes and anything you like and it never misses a absolutely never misses a beat it's really really very good one of the other things I liked about this device uh, that concluded me at 9 out of 10 was the fact that you can use this as a sort of interface for your uh, you know your software on your PC uh, you know Cubase or, or whatever it is you use there are so many flavors these days it's more like uh, licorice all sorts gets out of hand man you can't you can't use them all but that was quite nice and uh, quite useful so you take this USB and you whack that in your PC and then you've got this interface another thing I did do uh, you'll hear it uh, in a minute down there but another thing I did do when we were in the studio uh, to record this uh, I did do it di I did DI it so to speak into the desk and that sort of stuff but uh, it's in stereo. When it was in stereo, it, it sounded substantially better than when it was working in mono. Uh, and that's something I, I haven't mentioned anywhere in the video until now. But uh, the difference was quite staggering. So 
that's the good news. The bad news is, well, to get this in stereo, you're going to be routing it off to somebody's desk or you're going to have two amps, aren't you? <laughs> what a stereo amp and stereo speakers. Uh, and then you've got another problem because if you want to get the, the clean guitar signal out so you can have a real guitar, tube amp maybe, uh, along with this, well, there is an output here. It's called a through. So in comes your guitar. It goes back out through the through to the real amp. Well, that's another amp you've got to carry. <laughs> it should all be fun. I can see you now. My back, my back. Oh. Now, hey, listen. I'm still excited about this product. You know, the fact that there's no uh, interface. I can pick up my regular run-of-the-mill Ibanez out there and crank it up through this. And uh, I'm going to get these synth sounds. Now, you might say, well... Listen, if you want to be a synth player, go buy a synth and learn the keys, but I know the fretboard, I don't know the keys. Like most guitarists, I mean, I'm more interested in that aspect of it than the learning keyboard. <laughs> so, any moment now, we're going to go outside and see what the results are. Now, before you see it and I get to play, I've got to talk about my website, www.tonymackenzie.com. There it is. It's been rewritten at the moment. Well, I say rewritten. It's not rewritten. It's been updated uh, because Google told me that it was incompatible with a, a cell phone. And if you don't do anything about it, we're going to wipe you off the face of the earth. Yeah, they like that, them big boys, aren't they? And then you've got this other thing, this YouTube, where you're watching now, probably. Uh, now, I'm not all about one DVD. I'm on about 165 as you look at this video. No, that's not my age. That's the number of videos. And they're available here. www.youtube.com slash Tony McKenzie com with no dot before the com. And that will get you to my channel with all these 165 or more uh, videos on there. And uh, that's uh, taken me a long time to get there. So they're worth going have a look. There's guitars reviewed. There's guitars made. There's amplifiers inside. There's, there's mods. There's... Ah, so many things guitar related. Uh, so I just wanted to cover them two things before we get on to this playing. You know how it goes. I have to talk about the other things I do. There'll be a review of this, by the way, on my website uh, to accompany this video when I get to it. Uh, but as I'm doing the website anyway, I'll be writing this review as I go. And uh, I have lots of pictures for all that sort of stuff too. So that's about it. We're going to go and have a look at what it's like.
Thank <laughs> you.